and welcome to this Dreamweaver tutorial. My name is Daniel Walter Scott and I'm a trainer here at Bring Your Own Laptop. Um, in this course we're going to be looking at creating our CSS sheet, um, which is short for a cascading style sheet, which will style our fonts. So the first thing we need to do is make sure you can see your CSS designer on the right hand side here. If you can't see it, it's under window and just down here make sure the tick is on CSS designer. So the first thing we need to do is create our CSS sheet. Now hit this little plus button on the sources panel. Okay, and we're gonna create a new CSS file. Now, what will happen is it's gonna create a file for us. So a CSS file is an extra file that's gonna go into our website and we're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call ours main. It's really common to call it main, but you can call it anything you like. Okay, there's no specific naming conventions for CSS. Just try and avoid things like spaces and don't use any of the characters like a dollar sign or an asterisk or an at symbol. Any of those sorts of ones can cause you problems. Leave it as a link and let's click OK. All right, so what's happened now is it's created a CSS sheet. It's put it up here in our related documents bar. It says this is our HTML page, but this is a separate sheet that is related to this document to help it work. And I'll show you on the desktop as well. So in our website, we've got this new sheet called CSS. Okay, so main.css, a separate sheet, but together it's gonna to style our website. So first thing we've done is created our CSS sheet. It's over here, main.css. Now we're gonna, we're gonna skip media, okay, because that's getting a little bit more complicated. We'll look at that in a later tutorial. That's for the media queries when we're looking at mobile and tablet versus desktop. For the moment, we're gonna to move to selectors. So um, to help Dreamweaver along, what you can do is you can highlight the, the, the selector you wanna play around with. So we're gonna play around with this thing called a tag. So remember our H1 tag? So we're gonna play around with this. So the overall name for a, a tag is called a selector. So this one here, we're gonna pick our main.css and we're gonna create a selector. Now it tries to do its best at defaulting what you are trying to, trying to know what your intention was. Now it's created this one for body.h1. I just wanna style the h1 by itself. I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard. Great, so in my main.css, I'm styling the selector called h1. And down the bottom here, these are all the properties that I can play around with in CSS. Now it starts off with layout. We wanna to jump to the one that says type, okay, or text. Click on the T and it will jump down the list. It's a big long list. It'll jump down to where it says type. So we can start playing around with a few parts. We can start playing around with color. So let's have a look at the color. You can slide this hue slider up and down to pick your colors. Now you'll notice it still stays black at the top here. It's because this circle needs to be moved out to the different levels of the color you would like. So move it out to the middle and you'll see now I've got a nicer blue. And now I can play with the hue slider and adjust the color. So I'm gonna pick a blue, rough kind of blue there. And you can make it darker or lighter. Okay, and you can play around with the opacity of the color as well. I'm gonna leave mine at this blue, and when I'm finished, I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard, and it's put the color into my CSS, and you'll notice over here, my H1 is now this blue color. All right, so um, let's have a look at styling some of the other parts. So I'm going to click inside my H1, and you can see down here, it's defaulted to H1, and I got my color there. Now, font family, let's drop that down. So I get to pick a font. Now what happens with fonts on a website is that you don't embed the font like you do in a JPEG or a PDF. What happens is you add the code to the website and your website asks your user, do they have that font on their computer? That's why there's this big long list with all these commas. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick Gil Sans and what we're asking the user's computer is um, when it loads the website is say, hey, do you have Gil Sans on your machine? If it does, it will load it. If it doesn't, it will look for this other font, the next one, Gil Sans MT. If it doesn't have that, it will look at Myriad, then Deja Vu, then Helvetica, then Arial, and then the Sans Serif font. So it's bound to have one of these fonts. So when you are picking fonts, know that you've suggested Gil Sans, but it might end up being Myriad Pro. Later on in the course, we're gonna look at something called the at font face um, value, and that will help us pick more specific fonts and help get a bit more consistency. But at this stage, we're gonna suggest fonts. So pick Gil Sans, and you'll notice over here, 
it's picked a nice big gill sense. So the default for an H1 was big black Times New Roman and um, it's got this big space afterwards. So we've gone through and changed it to blue and gill sands, but we've left the bold on there. So if you want to remove things like the bold down here in my properties down the bottom right, uh, font style is to do with italics or not. I'm going to leave that normal. Uh, font variant, you can change it to small caps. Font weight, this is the one I want to, to play around with my bold. So you've got normal or bold. There are some other options in here, but unless you are really, really understand how the at font face value works at the moment, leave these ones and you can only play with normal and bold. We'll look at these at a later course. So normal and bold, I'm going to change it down to normal because I want to remove the bold. By default, it was bold, so I've moved it to normal. All right, there's a few other things you can play around with, and let's look at font size. So to start with, we're gonna look at pixels or points. It's up to you which you prefer to use. We're gonna use uh, points, um, and we're gonna pick something big, something maybe 20, but not, not too big. Um, so watch this, when I hit 20 and hit enter, there he is over here, my H1 is a more useful size. Um, Obviously, you can go bigger and smaller as you need. And we're going to use points for the moment. Later on, we're going to be using something called ends. But for the moment, use points or pixels. It doesn't really matter. So let's uh, leave it there. And after the next tutorial, we'll look at styling some of the other tags. So we'll style the P tag and the H2. And we'll style all these link tags as well. Great. So that's the end of this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one.